Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Audio Routing in Cubase. Slightly unusual one for you today. We're going to deal with a concept known as sidechaining. And the reason it's unusual is that sidechaining is an audio routing solution that doesn't necessarily or usually involve hearing the output. It's actually used as a control source. Uh, in uh, synth terms, you might consider it to be a control voltage. It's basically going to have some sort of effect on some other part of the sound. Just before we kick off on this, I'll point you at the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. A fantastic way to help support me carry on making content like this. What we've got here is uh, an audio loop that I've dragged out of the media bay and um, a groove agent track that I've converted into audio tracks. We're just seeing the kick drum here. And the important thing about this track is that the bass line is very consistent. You see its volume is very, very flat across the entire piece. The kick drum, however, has these really sharp spikes and then disappears to almost complete silence. Now these two sounds occupy a very similar frequency range. Typically 60 to 100 Hertz is where you'll find the kick drum and the bass guitar. And as a matter of principle, you don't generally want two sounds in the same frequency space. And so what I'm gonna to do today is employ a process known as ducking where I use the kick drum to temporarily reduce the volume of the bass guitar. It's gonna make these two sounds sit together much better because the kick drum is gonna temporarily suppress the bass guitar, make it get quieter, and then you'll hear the kick drum without any interference from the bass guitar. You don't notice that the bass guitar has disappeared, or you will in these examples because I'm gonna push everything to the max, but normally it's an effect that just makes everything sound better. And as you'll see very shortly, this is an example of routing. It's just an odd one. Now, most VST plugins these days are capable of supporting side chaining. The plugin itself does have to be coded to support side chaining. And because it's got a very good user interface, I'm going to use the Fab Filter compressor. And you'll find out if a VST plugin is capable of supporting side chaining with this little button at the top of the window, and it says activate or deactivate side chaining. VST3 plugins uh, have this feature most plugins uh, in Cubase VST3 these days. I'm going to turn that on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask this compressor to drop the level of the bass guitar, literally just cut uh, whole swathes of volume away or amplitude, depending on the volume it receives from the kick drum. The way that we do that is if we head over to the kick drum track, I'm going to send a signal from this kick drum. This is where the, the routing aspect comes in. And now that I've configured that plugin on the bass track, uh, to be sidechain activated, here it is. So what's happening here takes you a little bit to, uh, to get used to the first time you see it, but it's actually relatively straightforward. I'm taking a send out of the kick drums. We've dealt with send effects um, in one of the episodes of this series. The entire signal, see zero dB, is being fed somewhere else. In addition to going on to the stereo out and us hearing the kick drum, that, that signal is also being routed somewhere else. Well, it's being routed to the bass guitar and in particular to this compressor effect that's inserted on, onto the bass guitar's track. Now at the moment you're not going to hear this effect because we haven't fed the kick drum sound into the compressor and we do that in this particular plugin by saying take the feed for this compressor, the, the, the signal that instructs the compressor to do some work, take it from the external source. What that basically does is it connects this kick drum directly into the compressor. It's not interested in the level of the bass guitar sound itself. That's normally where compressors work. They have a threshold that determines whether or not they activate according to how, level the, how loud the incoming signal is. That's not what's happening here. But its threshold criterion is now fed from the kick drum. When the kick drum volume exceeds a particular threshold, the compressor's gonna apply. It's got nothing to do with the level of the bass guitar sound. I would almost need a full tutorial on how compressors work in order for me to explain fully everything that's going on here. I need to make sure that auto gain isn't on. I'm going to ask it to look ahead so the compressor is now basically seeing into the future. All of this stuff is recorded audio. Cubase itself knows exactly what's going to happen in 100 milliseconds time. The compressor is now looking ahead and the reason for that is that I'm going to set the attack of this compressor to the absolute minimum that this particular compressor can handle. The final thing that I need to do is to decide what my threshold is gonna be. I'm gonna have a look at the kick drum in order to determine that. 
because I only want to catch the loudest parts of the spike of the kick drum. And so if we have a look in the analyzer, I can cap it off at about minus 12 dB, and I'm just gonna catch these transients plus a little bit more as it tails away. So the threshold is gonna be at minus 12 dB. So if I plumb that number in, I'll start a little bit lower and we'll basically just salt to taste. Without doing anything else at all, let's hear what that loop sounds like. Can you hear the volume of the bass guitar? I've accentuated this for the purpose of illustration. But you can hear it dropping out. And in fact, the visual editor in Pro-C is pretty good at showing you what's happening. These sharp dips correspond with the kick drum. But it wouldn't be a very good demonstration if I stopped there because it doesn't actually sound very good. The compressor's clearly doing way too much work because we're hearing the bass get pulled down. Well, I'm gonna show you a nice little trick using rendering that we can make that a little bit tighter, basically improve the quality of this ducking. What I'm gonna do is select my bass track, open my render settings dialog box, and make sure that I've got complete signal path set. What I'm gonna do is render an example of the bass guitar after it's been ducked. Because it makes everything easier to see if these waves are as big as possible, I'll just normalize it, make it a bit bigger. And what we've got now is a visual demonstration of what the ducking is done. Remember earlier, the bass guitar was almost completely static, but now every time the kick drum occurs, we've got this dip in sound. And here's the problem. The compressor is spending so long, you can, this is the release of the compressor, it's spending so long releasing that by the time the next kick drum sound occurs, we haven't yet re recovered back to our full volume. So we need to make sure this ducking gets out of the way. What I'm gonna to do to accomplish that is switch my time reference to seconds. And I'm gonna have a look at how big this kick drum is. Let's say that's the maximum amount of time that I want the compressor to operate. Well, that's 96 milliseconds. Let's pl plug that number into the original compressor. So I've just undone that rendering so that I can get back to my original track, head back into my compressor, and now I'm gonna set the release time to a little bit shy of the full length of the kick because it's really only the sharpest part of the transient that I'm interested in grabbing. Now I'll render that track again and see what the new track looks like. Still a little bit shy of where I want it to be. It's basically listening to a little bit too much of this kick track. And so this time I'll raise my threshold to about minus 10. And hopefully now the compressor is fully out of the way by the time the next kick drum sounds. And here is the compression that we're interested in. This dip, this kind of triangular dip up to that point is all I actually want the compressor to do. For the final demonstration of this effect, I've just basically tweaked the, the compressor settings a little bit. Spent five minutes getting them um, as good as I, I think I can get them. And I'm just going to AB between uh, the compressed, the duct version and the non-duct version. What I invite you to listen to is the kick drum. When I, uh, when I bypass the filter, so we're back on the original track now, not the rendered track. When I bypass the filter, you'll hear kind of a phasing effect. On the kick drum you're not hearing the pure kick drum sound because the bass guitar is interfering with it when I, when I when i reintroduce the, the the ducking the kick drum sound just gets much clearer okay let's give that a go so this is with the ducking on kind of a tuff, tuff, tuff kind of effect where the bass drum's interfering with the kick drum. Suddenly the kick drum just gets fuller and thicker and richer and you're hearing more of the sound that you're supposed to hear unpolluted by the bass guitar. Anyway, that's the demonstration of side chaining for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.